Meat production is now big business. Huge quantities are produced at ever lower prices as productions become more intensive. This has raised concern about the effects on the environment and animal welfare. Increasing competition has put many small farmers out of business throughout the world. Some farmers are fighting back. I'm organic farmer because it's an elegant solution to a whole host of problems that are facing agriculture today to do with the environment, welfare, public health. Customers are increasingly aware of modern agricultural practices and really want to understand the traceability of where their meat comes from. Welfare is the thing that is going to market your pigs. If we connect well with the consumer, it's also a viable way to make a living. In this film, we shall be looking at the global development of modern pig production and the animal welfare issues associated with intensive pig rearing. We shall examine ways in which farmers have developed profitable and sustainable businesses using alternative systems designed to protect the environment and respect the welfare needs of farm animals. In Northern Europe, pigs all originate from the wild boar. Wild boar sows live in a family group, often of sisters and their young. They spend much of the day foraging for food, with periods of rest during both day and night. They eat large quantities of leaves and roots. In hot weather, they wallow in mud to keep cool. Just before farrowing, the sow leaves the group to find a secluded spot to build a nest. Here she will dig a hollow and line it with grass and leaves. Then she brings small branches to make the walls and the roof. Finally, she enters the nest to give birth to a litter of about five or six piglets. After two or three weeks, the sow returns to her family group with her litter. Minor conflicts will break out whilst the piglets work out a social hierarchy. Eight or nine thousand years ago, wild boar started to be domesticated. Pig farming was based on low input with a low level of production. Pigs fed mostly on what they could forage for themselves. This diet was supplemented by waste and surplus food that was high in fibre. This system still works efficiently on traditional farms in many countries across the world today and has produced a wide variety of breeds adapted to different climates. Such as these Iberian pigs from Spain that have black pigment to protect them from the sun and others are quite different, such as this Hungarian Mangalitsa that has been bred to cope with cold conditions. Well, nearly all cold conditions. Most modern pigs are bred from large white land race crosses. Despite these differences, domestic pigs still retain the same behaviors as their wild ancestors. They live in social groups, spend most of their time foraging for food, wallow to keep cool, and build nests before giving birth to their young. However, the majority of pigs in developed countries are kept in intensive systems that severely restrict their natural behavior. There are two main stages of pig production. Breeding sows are kept to produce piglets. Their piglets are fattened to produce meat. The breeding sows come into estrus and are mated or inseminated. Pregnancy lasts 115 days. In most countries they are kept in sow stalls, sometimes called gestation crates. Towards the end of pregnancy, they are moved to farrowing crates where they give birth and suckle their young. After three or four weeks, the piglets are removed from their mother and placed in pens. As they grow, they are moved to larger pens for fattening.
Intensive systems produce meat economically, but can cause welfare problems. Confinement in a stall restricts the sow's movements and prevents a range of highly motivated natural behaviors, such as foraging. This sow is bar biting, a common stereotypy which is continually repeated, serving no obvious physical function. Stereotypies are the result of being unable to express normal behaviors and are a sign of poor welfare. Bar biting may be partly a frustrated foraging behavior. Pregnant sows can suffer from chronic hunger since they are kept on restricted diets to prevent them from becoming fat. This sow appears to be thirsty, but she is probably also suffering from hunger. Unable to forage, hungry sows may drink excessive amounts of water. This sow is sham or pretend chewing, another stereotypy which may be associated with hunger. Unable to feed, she still chews repetitively. Welfare can significantly be improved by providing more space and keeping sows in groups. Though sham chewing can still occur where sows are fed unnaturally concentrated diets without access to rough forage. Stereotypies in sows or any other sentient animal derives from the frustration of the motivation to constructively work to improve the quality of their own life. The way to avoid uh, stereotypies is actually give the sows something constructive to do. The most obvious way to do that is to give them something to root in, straw or the earth for sows that are kept outside. They're foraging mostly for food but partly for curiosity. But they're always getting the satisfaction of getting a little bit. If you give them something constructive to do with their time you won't get stereotypies. Providing access to pasture can be an even better way of satisfying these needs. Pastures are important to sows because they like to eat it. I think it's good for them to eat it. I like to keep some green material in front of the sows. Keeps them full. Uh, it, it, we think it helps improve the meat quality, particularly of growing pigs. Um, and they get the health benefits like we do of having green material in the diet. Sows naturally live in social groups. But aggression can be a problem between sows at feeding time and when unfamiliar sows are mixed together. Aggression between adult sows is a problem and it is one of the reasons that sows were put into stalls in the first place. But it is the most heartless of solutions. It's basically saying that you won't get aggression if everybody is in solitary confinement. One can also deal with aggression around feeding time by appropriate design of the feeding procedures. Good stockmanship by keeping sows out of each other's way when they go into individual feeding stalls. What feeding them all at once by dropping food in a, into deep straw scattered all over the place. All the sows then get the opportunity to forage for a long time. You can, through good husbandry, manage away nearly all aggression in sows.